Hello everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation. This is another Reef Automation tutorial for the GHL. In this episode, we're going to talk about sensors and probes and how to go about programming them. So let's get started. So when you program a probe or a sensor in GHL, you actually have to program the sensor first and then what you would like the outlet to do with that sensor. So in this tutorial, we're going to just program a heater and a chiller. And that's what all we're going to do. But we're going to go over how, the, how you will configure the sensors as well. So when you get to your dashboard, you're going to see, in this case, I have four sensors. I have a pH, a salinity, a ORP, and a temp. So we're going to start with the temp. So if you click on the temp, it's going to get you to the sensor's location. So the first thing it shows you is the current value of the temperature. Now you can say that if you want to have Celsius or you want to have Fahrenheit, you could put it right here. The sensor active is what you can use if you do not want to use the sensor at all, or let's say you don't even have the sensor plugged in. This is where you enable and disable it. The description here, you can put whatever you'd like. It's not going to really matter as it's going to take whatever it's called up here as we program it. But you can put this as a description. For instance, if you had multiple temperature sensors, you could say temp for reef tank, or you can say temp for fish tank, or if you have multiple tanks, you can do it that way. Um, the operating hours is important. As you replace probes, my recommendation is that you go to operating hours and set the value to zero anytime you replace a probe. And what's nice about that is it'll tell you how many hours you've had it running. So the next thing is your measurement data and what is used on the chart, which we're going to show at the end of this. And the chart is basically the same thing as showing a measurement value every couple minutes. Um, you want to save values on a temperature if you want to view it on the chart. So in this case, we're going to save values and we're going to have it every five minutes. The next is kind of the most important part of the probe. Now, in GHL, when you program something, you're actually programming the outlet to do something based off of the sensor controls, which is what we're about to go through. So the first thing is the nominal value. Now, the nominal value is the most important part. This is where you put what you would like the value to be all the time or close to it. So in this case, we would like the nominal value to be 77. Now, we're going to pass cooling difference for a second, and we're going to go to height hysteresis. Now hysteresis is what it actually uses to turn off and on your nominal value. So for instance, if I set this to 1, it's going to turn on something if it goes above or below 77 by 0.5 degrees. That's what this means. So the best way to really look at it is divide this by 2 and that's going to be your plus or minus your nominal value. So if I set this to 2, it would be plus or minus 1, for example. So cooling difference is a little tricky to understand. So for this, I've actually pulled up the Provolux programming manual, and I'm actually going to leave that in the description so you can click on it and take a look at it. But how the cooling difference works is it takes a nominal value plus 5, 6 times the hysteresis plus cooling difference, and that's how the cooling difference works. So with a hysteresis of 0.2, the result is T equals nominal value plus 0.165 Celsius plus cooling difference. And that's how the cooling difference works. And it's basically meant for chillers so that the chiller doesn't come on at the same time as the heater. So that's essentially what cooling difference means in the most complex form. But that's what cooling difference actually does. Um, Generally, I'm going to set the cooling difference to zero as long as the hysteresis is high enough so that the chiller does not come on at the same time as the heater. So the 1 to 10 volt maximum deviation is our next thing. So it is really meant for fans or something that you might hook up to the Provolux that has a 0 to 10. And what this essentially does is it increases the fan output, for instance, up to a certain amount of degrees. So if it's 3.6 at your max deviation, that would mean that above 3 degrees is when you want it to put the highest output through the fan. And that's essentially what the 1 to 10 volt maximum deviation means. The next thing is nocturnal change. And what this is for is it changes your nominal value during a certain period of time at night. So, for instance, if your nominal value was 77 and you had a deviation, or I'm sorry, you have a change of one degree here, 
That would mean at night, it's actually going to set the nominal value to 78. And you can set that right here. The next thing is the alarm, and that's a very basic thing. Um, so the alarm will do a max deviation as well, plus or minus, above or below the nominal value, and alert you. You can also have it so it deactivates and inactivates the alarm depending on a specific device. For instance, if you have a heater or cooler and the alarm goes off, do you want it to deactivate your heater or do you want it to de deactivate your chiller? And then you can have it no alarm on water change. And what that means is if you're in a maintenance mode, essentially, or a filter feed mode, you can have it so the alarm doesn't go off. Summer switching is a little complex, and I didn't really get into summer switching. But essentially what it does is during the sun, summer, you can have the uh, heater go at a certain amount of time longer or the chiller at a certain uh, amount of time longer than it normally does. And that's what the 20 and the active... We're not going to really get into that in this tutorial, but that's essentially what it does. Now, if you click on charts, you can see the charts. And again, it's going to be based off of the values that you sent earlier, which we talked about. If you want it to come every five minutes, as you can see, it's going to give you um, a measurement every five minutes throughout the day. And you can set that to whatever you'd like. And that's what the measurement is for. You're going to see this little star up here that says that we've made changes and you have to save them. So we're not going to do that at this point. We're going to go back to our dashboard. We are just going to discard our changes and we're going to go to the next one. So now that we've set our temperature, we're going to go into the outlets. Now I've already set a heater outlet and a chiller outlet. So if I set my heater outlet, which is right here, which has the description on switch channel one, I can actually do the same thing. I have operating hours, how long it's been operating for when it's been on. And this is where I set what I wanted to use. And in this case, I wanted to use the temperature one sensor. That's what it's called, temperature one. And then what I want the item to do is heat. So for instance, if I plug in heater into here, I want it to heat. So I'm going to click heater. Now what that's going to do is it's going to turn the heater on based on my nominal value and hysteresis. And if the hysteresis is lower than the nominal by the amount that I said, it's going to turn on the heater. Now, the blackout delay is relatively simple to understand. It's not going to turn on exactly at the time, and you can delay it a few minutes if you want. So, for instance, you might want to defer it for a minute, or you might want to wait you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, and then have it turn on when, it, when the value gets to a certain time. So that's what that's for. And then in this case, we wouldn't probably be inverting the switching behavior, but this is if you wanted to do the opposite of the heater. So this is where you would invert it. And in this case, we're not going to do that. So if we go back and we go to our sensors. Let's say we want to go to a chiller. The programming is pretty much the same thing, except for you would hit cooler instead of heater. And in this way, it's going to turn on when the hysteresis gets higher than the nominal value to turn on the chiller. And that's what you do for the outlets of the chiller. Now, the other uh, sensors are basically the same. If we go to pH, uh, you're going to see most of the same uh, information that I provided earlier. You got the alarm. You have the nocturnal change, the probe sensors. If you had, let's say, uh, a calc reactor or possibly you're using this on a calcium reactor, you might want to set your hysteresis a certain way and then set up an outlet for pH to turn on and off. Very similar. And, of course, it's got the charts. Um, if we go to the next one, which is going to be uh, Redox or ORP, same thing. You can see you got values um, of sensor controls, nominal values. It's essentially the same thing on all the sensors, so I'm not going to go through it too much. But that's the basics uh, of the sensors and how to program them. So hopefully you got something out of this video, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And look forward to the next video.